Hey guys, Lance here with Medicare Help. Now, two questions we get asked the most are, what is Medicare and how does it work? So basically, Medicare is a health insurance program that the United States government provides for people that are age 65 and older. And for anyone under the age of 65 who uh, have a disability or anyone dealing with ongoing kidney failure, they may qualify as well. Now, the original Medicare program is made up of three main parts. Uh, there's part A, part B, and part D. So there are four parts total, including part C, which is an alternative to the original parts. Uh, now, how much you will pay for each of these parts will depend on your individual or household income. So in this video, I'll be going through all the basics you'll need to know about the four parts to the Medicare program. And I'll be sure to include any helpful links in the description below this video. So if you need more information about Medicare, it will be there for you if you would like to learn more. Now, assuming you qualify for Medicare, the first step is to figure out which Medicare option would be the best for you. But before we break down the specifics of each part, it's important to know that there are two very common ways most people structure their Medicare coverage. Uh, the first is sticking with the original Medicare Part A and Part B, uh, with the choice of adding Part D prescription coverage and, and or a Medicare supplement plan to cover any costs not covered by Medicare. And the second way is to switch over to a Part C plan, uh, which completely replaces your original Medicare parts uh, and is completely known as a Medicare Advantage plan. So next I'll go ahead and break down these different parts in more detail, but first I want to explain how auto enrollment works. So for starters, most people that become eligible for Medicare are auto enrolled into part A and some people are also auto enrolled into part B. Also, if you are on social security, you may be auto enrolled and automatically receive your cards in the mail when you turn 65. Basically, it's important to know that Medicare Part A and Medicare Part B both work together uh, to make up the original Medicare program. So let's talk about Medicare Part A first. Uh, to put it simply, Part A is a hospital and skilled nursing facility coverage. The good thing is most people don't have to pay for Part A. Uh, for example, uh, if you or your spouse has worked for more than 10 years or 40 calendar quarters throughout your lifetime, then you've probably paid for it with Medicare taxes from your paycheck. And you may also be eligible for a premium free Part A uh, if you receive social security benefits, uh, railroad retirement benefits, or if you or your spouse has Medicaid sponsored uh, government employment. Now, if you don't qualify for premium free Part A, uh, you'll end up paying either $259 or $471 a month, depending on how many calendar quarters uh, your Medicare taxes have been paid throughout your lifetime, uh, either by you or your spouse. However, again, the majority of people are eligible for a premium free Part A. But uh, it's also important to know that there may be a deductible. <laughs> so if you go into the hospital, uh, this deductible uh, is the part that you have to pay before your Medicare benefits start paying. Now, the deductible for 2021 is $1,484. Now, this amount does change every year, so you'll wanna keep that in mind. Uh, and this deductible is not a yearly deductible either. Medicare actually requires that you pay the deductible for each benefit period, and I'll explain what this means next. So, a benefit period starts the day you're admitted to the hospital, and it ends when you haven't received any hospital or skilled nursing facility care for 60 days. For example, if you have been admitted to the hospital on July 1st, and you return home on July 7th, and you unfortunately have to return again a week later on July 14th, you will not have to pay the deductible again because you are within the same benefit period. However, if you didn't return to the hospital or a care facility until September 16th, which would be 61 days after leaving the hospital, you would have to pay this deductible again because this would be considered a new benefit period. Now, in a few minutes, I'll be telling you about Medicare supplement plans, which are designed to help you pay for some or all of this deductible. So I'll tell you more about those uh, here in just a minute. Uh, but if you go into the hospital or a short-term care facility to get better after being sick or getting hurt, Part A coverage is what covers that. 
It also covers hospice and some in-home care as well. Now, after the cost of your deductible, Medicare will pay everything else for your hospital stay for up to 60 days. But after 60 days, that changes and you will have to help pay for your care. This is what's called a coinsurance payment. And this will be a daily charge for each day you are there past 60 days. So from 61 to 90 days, the daily coinsurance charge is $371 per day. But after 91 days, it doubles to $742 per day until you use up your lifetime reserve days. Medicare provides 60 days within your lifetime uh, in which you can have your care covered uh, after the initial 90 day period. And these are called lifetime reserve days. Now, after you've used up all your lifetime reserve days, you'll be responsible for paying all the costs associated with your hospital care. Now, if you're in a skilled nursing facility, it's a little different. Uh, Medicare will pay for your first 20 days, but after that, you will have to pay $185.50 for each day that you are there for up to 100 days. So what I just talked about regarding Medicare Part A covers the hospital part of Medicare. Now let's talk about Part B. <laughs> so Part B covers medically necessary services like doctors, uh, outpatient appointments, tests, outpatient care, home health services, durable medical equipment, and preventative services like early stage treatment or uh, vaccines. Thankfully, Part B will pay for any doctors or health providers that accept Medicare, and you won't have a restricted provider network. But let's now talk about the costs associated with Part B. Now, typically you have to pay a monthly premium for Medicare Part B, and how much you will pay depends on your circumstances and income. The standard premium for Medicare Part B in 2021 is $148.50 per month. For anyone who makes over $88,000 a year uh, individually or above $176,000 on a joint tax return, uh, the cost of your monthly premiums will be higher. In addition to the monthly premium, there's also a deductible uh, that starts at $203 a year. And again, that's based on your income. So it could be higher than that too, depending on your situation. Now, after you pay your yearly deductible, Medicare will pay 80% of the medical costs covered and you have to pay the other 20%, uh, which can get pretty expensive and start to cost you a lot of money. So again, we're going to talk more about gap coverage here in a second, which will help you pay for those costs. And you should also note that Medicare Part A and Part B doesn't cover many other costs associated with your healthcare, uh, like dental, vision, and hearing services. Now, because most people have to pay for Part B, uh, Medicare gives you the choice whether to get this coverage or not. But it's important to know that if you turn it down or if you don't sign up in time, you could pay more for it later or have to wait until the next year during the general enrollment period to sign up for this coverage. So once you qualify for Medicare, you only have a certain amount of time to ask for Part B. And you need to do this during your seven month initial enrollment period. Now, how Part B works is if you go into the hospital, Part A would pay for your stay but Part B would pay for your ambulance rides, surgeries, medicines, tests, and medical equipment, such as wheelchairs, canes, and walkers. Uh, another good thing about Part B is that it also pays for treatment to help you keep from getting sick, which is any of your preventative care. Uh, this uh, would include flu shots, yearly doctor visits, and any other tests to check for early signs uh, of any problems. Now to summarize, so far I've covered what Medicare is, and how it works. And I've also been talking about co-pays, deductibles, and co-insurance uh, that you might have to pay too. So now it's time to talk about how you can cover some or all of these additional costs. Now, earlier on, I mentioned that there's basically two options with your Medicare coverage. The first option is to remain on original Medicare, uh, which is Medicare Part A and Part B, and then to consider a Part D prescription drug plan and possibly a Medicare supplement plan to cover your additional costs. The second option is to switch completely to Part C, which is commonly known as Medicare Advantage. Now, I'll explain more about Part D and Part C in just a moment, but first, let's talk about how a Medicare supplement plan can help cover some of these costs. Medicare supplement or Medigap plans are there to work with your Medicare Part A and Part B uh, to help cover some or all of the additional costs you have to pay, like uh, co-pays, deductibles, and co-insurance. Basically, uh, Medicare Supplement and Medigap are just different names for the same type of health insurance plan. You can use either name. 
So to explain the terms themselves, you can think of Medigap as a plan that fills in some of the gaps for benefits that original Medicare uh, Part A and Part B doesn't cover. Now, Medigap can cost anywhere from $50 to $300 per month. And there are several different factors that can affect how much it will be, including your location. So there are a range of Medigap plans, which are also labeled by letters, uh, but the most popular choice is Plan G. And this is because it covers the most benefits. Now, on this plan, you only have to pay for the monthly cost of your Medicare Part B premium, uh, which is that monthly payment that starts at around $140.50. Now, with this Medigap plan, uh, you will pay for those payments, plus pay for your Medigap coverage. And then uh, your Medigap coverage will pay for some or all of your co-pays, uh, co-insurance and deductibles. Uh, so that includes all of your Part A hospital deductibles and skilled nursing co-insurance and uh, all those daily charges. So it is really helpful. Also, it's important to know that if you have Medicare Advantage Part C, uh, then you wouldn't qualify to have this plan. This is only for people who have original Medicare. Also with Medigap plans, because they are private insurance, it can mean that you might have to uh, be asked questions by underwriters, except for when you are within your initial enrollment period and when you first take Medicare Part B. So you'll wanna remember to make sure you select your Medigap plan during your initial enrollment or when you first go onto Medicare Part B, because during those two periods of time, you're allowed to select any plan you want without having to answer any questions. Otherwise, you may have to get an approval. And something to be aware of is that they can decide to decline you. And that means uh, they can deny you coverage. So you'll wanna keep that in mind as well. Okay, so before we move on to explain part C, uh, the alternative to original Medicare, let's talk about part D, which is the third part of original Medicare. So part D is your prescription drug coverage and, and you can add part D to your original Medicare. Uh, Medigap plans do not include prescription drug coverage. So you may also wanna consider a Part D plan to help with these costs as well. The monthly premium of Part D can be between $15 and $90 per month, depending on the plan. And also some of the medicines might cost a copay amount when you get them as well. If your individual income is over $88,000 or $176,000 per year on a joint tax return, you may also have to pay a Medicare premium in addition to your plan premium but it's best to speak with a licensed uh, Medicare insurance advisor to confirm what plans cover the prescription drugs that you need and how much you'll have to pay. Now, there are a few things to know about your Part D prescription coverage, such as what it covers, how much it covers, uh, and how much the deductible might be. It's also important to know there are four phases involved with your prescription coverage, and the amount you will pay uh, will depend on the phase you're in and the type of uh, medication you're taking. Uh, for example, the first phase is your deductible phase, which is the part that you have to pay before your insurance begins to pay. Uh, so this deductible can vary based on the plan and on average can range from $300 to $400 per year. But Medicare dictates that this be capped at a maximum of $445 per year, which is the amount set for 2021. Uh, there are also some Part D plans that offer a $0 deductible. So you will only be responsible for a set copayment and coinsurance when collecting your prescriptions. Now in some plans, a deductible only applies to certain tiers on prescription drugs. And I'll be following up more about that with a separate video uh, to explain these tiers in more depth. So you can learn more about those later on as well. Now, once you have met your deductible, you will move into the initial coverage phase and your Medicare Part D plan will begin to pay your drug costs up to a certain amount of coverage. So within this period, you will still need to pay a copayment, which is a fixed amount that you'll uh, pay when you pick up your prescriptions, um, or you'll pay a coinsurance, which is a percentage of your prescription drug costs. Uh, the total coverage amount changes each year, but in 2021, uh, Part D plans covered up to $4,130 per year uh, within this phase. Now, if you happen to reach this coverage limit in your initial coverage phase, uh, you'll move on to the coverage gap phase, often referred to as the donut hole. <laughs> the good news is 90% of people will never reach this phase. But if you do, you will usually have to pay 25% for all your prescription drugs and your plan will pay the rest. Um, also, 
there aren't any supplement programs or savings accounts to help with this. So unless you bought Medigap coverage before 2006, um, but they haven't offered anything like that since then. Thankfully though, this coverage gap is limited. And if you spend more than $6,550 annually on out-of-pocket prescription costs, uh, you will move into the catastrophic phase where uh, Medicare will begin to cover your drugs again. And you will usually only be responsible for a small copay or coinsurance in this phase. Now it's important to make sure you choose the right plan when enrolling in Part D so that you can hopefully avoid getting any expensive, unexpected bills after picking up your prescriptions. So make sure the licensed insurance agent you speak with is aware of all the prescription drugs and brands you take so they can help ensure you're on the right prescription drug plan for your personal circumstances. And again, I will be following up uh, with a more in-depth video covering everything you need to know about Medicare Part D, so uh, be sure and take a look at that for more information. Okay, so moving on to Medicare Part C. <laughs> this is commonly known as Medicare Advantage Plan. Part C is a replacement for your original Medicare, uh, and it is a government subsidized alternative offered by private insurance companies. Uh, if you choose to have a Medicare Part C plan, this will replace your Medicare Part A and B and usually will include prescription drug coverage, but if it doesn't, you can add this separately. Uh, many people choose this option because these plans will limit what you have to pay out of pocket, and they will also offer additional benefits and coverage for things like dental, uh, vision, hearing, hearing aids, gym memberships, and transportation, all of which you've likely heard about on the repetitive TV commercials. <laughs> uh, these plans usually have a monthly premium, uh, but some are available for as little as a $0 monthly premium making them a very popular alternative. Around 40% of Medicare beneficiaries choose to have an Advantage plan. So Medicare Part C is an alternative way to get your Medicare benefits, and it lets you combine all your coverage into one plan uh, with extra benefits uh, and limited out-of-pocket costs. But all that sounds too good to be true, right? So what's the catch? Well, Part C Medicare Advantage plans usually have limited doctors and health provider networks. So you may be limited to using their choice of doctors depending on which type of coverage you choose. Now, there are some plans that offer flexibility outside of the plan's network, but this will usually come at a higher cost to you than doctors within the network. So when you are enrolling in a Medicare Advantage plan, it's important to tell your insurance advisor exactly what doctor or health providers you would like to use so they can make sure you're on the right plan for your situation. There are various types of Medicare Advantage plans, and in, in this video, um, we'll focus on some of the most popular ones. Um, I also have a separate video you can watch that goes into more details, specifically about Part C and the different types of Medicare Advantage plans. So if you'd like more information about that, feel free to watch that video uh, as well. So the two most common types of Medicare Advantage plans are Health Maintenance Organizations, or HMOs for short, and Preferred Provider Organizations, or PPOs for short. The most significant difference between these two plans are usually uh, the size of the healthcare provider network, uh, the cost of the plan itself, the ability to see specialists without referrals, and the coverage for out-of-pocket network services. There are also private fee-for-service plans. These are commonly known as PFFSs. <laughs> you will typically have a monthly premium, co-payments, and co-insurance, which will all vary greatly depending on the plan. Next, another common type of Medicare Advantage plan is a special needs plan, also known as an SNP. Uh, these plans offer coverage to people with specific diseases, uh, certain health care needs, or limited income. Uh, SNPs cover all the same Medicare uh, Part A and Part B benefits, but uh, they offer extra coverage for services tailored to the groups of people they serve. Now, those are the most common types of health care plans under Medicare Advantage. Uh, but there is uh, also a type called a Medicare MSA or medical savings account, which we're just gonna touch on briefly here. For everything you need to know about Medicare MSAs, there is another helpful video you can watch on that as well, where I'll be going into more detail. So feel free to watch that later on if you'd like. So a Medicare medical savings account is a type of health plan that is designed to allow you uh, the freedom over your own healthcare decisions, uh, as well as being premium free. Although you will still have to pay your Part B premiums, uh, which was that premium of, of around $140.50 I mentioned before, uh, there are two important things that set this healthcare plan apart. First, it has a high deductible. And second, 
the government will give and fund you a special savings account uh, to pay towards this deductible. Only payments to providers for services covered by Original Medicare count towards your deductible. Also, Medigap plans cannot be used to help pay this deductible. It has to come from your medical savings account and your own funds. Now, some of the benefits of this plan include choosing your own provider as long as they accept Medicare. Uh, also, at the end of each year, any funds left over in your MSA will be rolled over to the next year, and this happens every year. So ultimately, with Medicare Advantage, there are many types of plans to choose from, but that covers the most common plans. And again, for a more detailed, in-depth look into Medicare Advantage Part C, uh, you can click on the link in the description below this video for more information about uh, these types of plans. Also, if you would like to speak uh, to someone in person, I'll include a phone number in the description below uh, where you can reach uh, one of our recommended licensed insurance agents. It's free to talk to them. They'll be happy to answer any questions you have and ultimately help you figure out what might be best for you. Uh, so hopefully after watching this video, you'll feel more familiar with Medicare and how it works. And although it's honestly pretty confusing and maybe even a little overwhelming at first, uh, we're here to help you find the information you need. So please don't hesitate to reach out and leave any comments or questions down below. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.